right. Ron Paul. So simple, even a caveman can understand it. Uh, very simple positions. Mm -hmm. And the Fed. That's the main thing. All this other stuff, I can't emphasize it enough. The main thing is all the money. And all the money. And, uh, you know, I want to, there's so much going on. And especially, and then after the debates, oh my God, he called it Chicken Hawk a Chicken Hawk. Right? <laughs> awesome. Uh, they don't, they just don't know what to make of this guy. They don't, a straight talker, somebody actually speaks the truth and just like straight up tells you what he thinks. Right? Without apology? What? Who is this guy? He must be a racist. We, he's crazy. He's a dangerous isolationist. He wants to, right? Oh my goodness. So let's, let's get a couple of things clear. Understanding the horror of war. You know what? Women are raped and babies burn during wars. Always have, always will. Whether it's the United States and we, you know, we want to be the righteous, good guys all the time. But war is war. And when you throw young boys, 18, 19, 20, 21 year old boys into a situation where they had guns and people are shooting at them. Uh, all the constitution and all that stuff goes out the window and many of them have come back and said as much. And it's, and it's not just our guys, any guys, any humans, you put them in these atrocious conditions and it becomes the band of brothers. You're not fighting for the flag or the ideals. You're trying to stay alive and not have, you know, you know. Anyway, it just becomes an ugly, ugly thing. And, and, you know, you'll see guys go back, not so much because they believe in the war, but because they can't leave their friends. And our governments understand this and use it against us. Now, I have never been to war, personally. One of the few members of my family that chose not to go the military route. However, I have many family members that left their blood in foreign places. And I have lots and lots of friends who have been over there and come back changed men. And never speak of it. I haven't seen ugly, ugly things. Speak of it maybe when drunk, you know, briefly. But ugly, ugly things. A war is an ugly thing. War is an atrocious thing. War is a last resort. Now, Ron Paul seems to understand this very simple concept. War is hell. And those who go to war in Mesopotamia, those who go to war in Mesopotamia always live to regret it. Assuming they live to regret it. That's a quote that's like 2,000 years old. Right? So Afghanistan, where empires go to die. Now, we've got this guy that would like to bring the troops home, who would like to have peace, he would like to not have war with Iran, and then we've got these guys beating the drums of war. And we fall right into the, you know, the people in Iran would like to get rid of their leadership and maybe get some reasonable, you know, some, some real change. But the people in Iran are not fans of the United States. They know their history. Go look it up. Again, the two things. One, go look up uh, military suicides. Search terms. You just got to know search terms now. Military suicides. More guys dying by suicide. Our boys dying by suicide than were killed in combat. It's the ugly reality of it. And then go look up our history with Iran. They have no love of us. Their kid, their, their, you know, the youth are not like, oh, we want to be Americans, we want to be more like Americans. No. They know their history. Go take a look at how many, you know, democratically elected leaders we threw down. Installed the Shah of Iran. I mean, ugh, just, our history there is, 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 is not something to be terribly proud of. But they don't want their mullahs. But this propaganda about how the, you know they would embrace us with open arms if we were no no they wouldn't that the dogs rally against the wolf the same way that I despise George Bush and that ilk but had the United States been attacked while George Bush was president you wouldn't see me you know agitating against George Bush right joining the Chinese or whoever whatever foreign threat you can try to make up that would come over here and try to attack us. No, we would fight as Americans, 
against the external threat, the same way the Iranians would fight against the external threat, which happens to be us. Right? War is always great for silencing dissent. Look at all our founding fathers and all the different you know quotes they had about war and how they understood that you know you could use a foreign enemy to bring tyranny here at home. Well, it's the same thing the mules do. Right? Those guys would be able to rise up or would be more effective at you know calling for change if the mullahs weren't able to brand them as traitors and call them you know American sympathizers and all this stuff which is apparently a very, very dirty term in Iran. Because, like I said, look at look up our history. I mean, just read the simplest, you know, 100-year outline of uh, our history with Iran. And by the way, in that 100 years, has the Persian Empire attacked anybody? Anybody? They've been attacked, and they defended themselves well. Right? When we were funding Saddam Hussein to go attack Iran... Now, peace. The idea is peace. This is not dangerous. Peace is not dangerous. War is dangerous. This future speak that they give you. Oh, so many issues. And then, okay, and that's just the issue of war. But the main issue, what's the main issue? The main issue is the Fed. Stop the looting, start the prosecuting. And this is what they're most deathly afraid of with Ron Paul. What if they had an administration and an attorney general whose job it was to enforce the law and to enforce contracts? Right? It was MF Global thing. What if, they, what if we had a government that was actually, you know, forcing them to enforce contracts and honor contracts, which is one of the things that the federal government is supposed to do. And if, and if Ron Paul got in there and had a, you know, <laughs> an attorney general that was actually prosecuting these billionaire bankers, these rapers, right? These crisis causers, and then the Fed, right? The Federal Reserve, again, a private corporation that loans our currency to us at interest. Does that make any sense to you at all? We're supposed to have a treasury. We should have, at the very least, debt-free currency. If not sound money, then at least debt-free currency. And now. Look it up. I mean, again, look it up. How much interest do we owe on our debt now? And they've just continuously spent, didn't matter if it was Republicans or Democrats controlling Congress, just spend, spend, spend until the debt, look where our debt is, trillions and trillions of dollars. Just the interest alone on that could feed all the hungry in the world. Just the interest for one year. Of course he's the crazy man. Of course he's racist. Of course he's dangerous. He's not dangerous to you and me. He's dangerous to the elite. And see, our soldiers and many others they, who give him more than all the other guys combined are starting to figure out who the enemy is. Right? Who he is dangerous to. Because the concept of, you know, ending the drug war and, you know enforcing contracts and unlimited right to contract and free markets and trade and peace these things resonate with you know 70 80 90 percent of the population think about it now of course they're gonna call him crazy of course and the idea is the message needs to get out that every time this guy votes in Congress he used the Constitution as his guide. And so now, whatever they bring up, like the 1964 Voting Rights Act, what, what's his rationale behind that? Right? Marriage. Gay marriage. Right? Unlimited right to contract. Right? You want to contract for raw milk? <laughs> Alright, just simple common sense. And the guy speaks straight straight talker it doesn't it's it doesn't get any simpler so easy any caveman can understand ron paul simple american ideals get back to the constitution restore the republic